If there's one thing coaster enthusiasts really like doing, it's dumping on the GP. Probably sometimes maybe even more than riding the coasters themselves. The GP, or general public, is a perennial target of those who identify as enthusiasts, and a never-ending source of both mirth and misery inside of theme parks and in online spaces. You may recognize them from the YouTube comments as the ones commenting, OMG, my friend died on this coaster, or maybe from behind you in line when they say that Chikra is both the world's tallest and fastest roller coaster. To them, all coasters are built by the parks themselves, all elements are referred to as loop-de-loops, and a B&M is just something that happens when you eat too much Chipotle. But look, I'm not here to dump on the GP either, because I'm actually here to drop some cold and hard truths. Yes, the GP are the good guys, actually. Now, before you launch into Thuzi supremacy speech, I want to be clear and say that I'm not saying being a coaster enthusiast is a bad thing. Thuzis play a vital role in the theme park ecosystem, both by being some of the most loyal and dedicated guests out there, and also generating unparalleled levels of hype and excitement for new additions and classic rides. But for every park announcement met with high praise and never-ending POV analysis on the YouTube.com, there's also a flip side to all of that positivity, which is what happens when a park is caught catering to the GP. Let's look at an example. If you haven't already heard, Six Flags Fiesta Texas recently announced a new addition to the park, a brand new B&M dive coaster entitled Dr. Diabolical's Cliffhanger, which truth be told is a pretty badass name for what will probably be a pretty average ride. Not to say I can actually fairly rate this thing, because not only have I not ridden it, it's not actually been built yet. However, I have ridden three of the four North American B&M dive machines, and I gotta say, they're just not for me. I don't find them particularly exciting, and that's okay. All of that being said, I think even I can admit that this looks like a pretty fun, fantastically themed ride that is a great addition to an already stacked lineup down there in San Antonio. There's not a single doubt in my mind that Dr. Diabolical or Cliffhanger or whatever this thing is going to end up being referred to will be a smash hit with the general public, and overall it just seems like a no-brainer business decision from the Six Flags team. Take a peek over at enthusiast circles on the internet, however, and you'd think Six Flags just made an announcement banning cargo shorts. Oh sick, a new dive coaster. Show the big way below 200 feet. Oh come on. Man, we already have one of those here at Bush Gardens Tampa for years. It's called Shakra. They're all the same to BH. They're essentially clones with a tweak here and there. They really thought they were doing something with the five degree beyond vertical drop. The axis would have been so much more interesting. Not tall or fast enough, Pyamo. Even though the 95 degrees will be amazing, I do wish it was 200 to 400 feet tall and 75 to 118 miles per hour. I don't think I'd go on the ride due to lack of adrenaline experience, but Dr. Diabolical seems very worthy of being my wife. I'm just gonna uh, let that last one speak for itself. But you get the idea. Lots of enthusiasts are very, very unhappy because this is not a 500 foot tall, 120 mile per hour SNS axis. And I know we can all point and laugh at YouTube comments. It's a literally free comedy source, but even you might be thinking, hey, you know, a B&M dive coaster is not necessarily the machine that I was really looking forward to, I don't know, Six Flags, maybe drop the ball on this one. So yeah, now it's time to come to the thesis of this video. The GP are the good guys, actually. Because at the end of the day, no matter how many theme parks you've been to, credits you have, t-shirts you own, Instagram followers you've procured, you will never be as valuable to the theme park business as the good old Gen Pop. There's the obvious thing, the very green thing, and that's money. Of course, there are more members of the GP than there are the enthusiast community, and so, yes, although we might get very upset that they're not building a new Giga every time a park makes a roller coaster announcement, that's not exactly how parks operate. They need to make money, and without money, they can't build roller coasters in the first place. So at the end of the day, the GP is the bottom line, and the GP is what funds brand new coasters for the Thuzi community to make POVs about on the YouTube. 
But there's something else the GP does that makes sure themselves, coaster enthusiasts, and the park have a good day every day the park opens its gates. And I can explain it to you in two words. Crowd control. In my mind, there is no greater indicator of whether or not I'm going to have a good day at a theme park than crowd levels. Simply put, if a park is slammed, it's gonna suck. The more attractions present in a park to keep people out of the midways and into ride queues, the happier everyone is, including, yes, enthusiasts. Park designers and operators have no choice but to try to build a ride that caters to the largest demographic possible in order to obtain mass appeal and therefore reduce crowd levels. If they don't, all of a sudden attendance levels get out of hand and you're waiting two hours plus for that kitty credit you need for your collection. Even worse, people get sick of heavy crowd levels and leave, which means less money for the park, which means less money for new additions, which means less fun rides for enthusiasts. And next thing you know, every park in the country looks like Michigan's adventure. So how does all of this make the GP the good guys? Well, let me ask you this. Would you wait three hours plus for a mediocre B&M dive coaster? No, probably not. But the GP might. Would you get excited over the world's steepest dive coaster, even though that's A, a meaningless title, and B, the coaster itself is one of the shortest dive coasters ever built? No, but the GP would. Would you buy fast passes for the singular purpose of being first in line for a 4D free spin that you can marathon for the rest of the day before the concussion sets in? No, but the GP will. All of the theme park nonsense that enthusiasts get tired of and make sure to avoid every time they go to a theme park, the GP, God bless them, have a member who will take that one in stride. And that's why they're the good guys. The GP are the lifeblood of the theme park industry. And no matter how passionate us enthusiasts can get, no matter how many YouTube videos we make analyzing rides and comparing rankings, the GP are what make the cogs in the machine turn day after day. They buy the tickets and the food and the merch and the numbers that really matter to the bottom line. And yes, they love coasters that are big and flashy and overly smooth and really don't do much of anything and are kind of a waste of time. But you know what? That's okay. Because when the GP are busy being the good guys and having fun, we're having fun too. And when the parks are doing well, we're one step closer to a brand new RMC, a brand new B&M Giga, or maybe, just maybe, that SNS Access announcement after all.